Hello, magical beings, and welcome to another reading by the Wild Mystics. So happy to have you guys here, all of our returning subscribers and everyone who is new. Thank you so much for coming. Um, today we are asking Spirit, who or what are you manifesting into your life at this time? So it's a timeless reading. When you come to this reading, these are the messages that are meant to find you, okay? So take what resonates and don't let the rest take from you. Um, so today we have three beautiful shamanic uh, upcycled pendants for you and they're all made out of bark so all of these bark pieces are found in the woods um, where we live here so it's a special reading because today we're outside so hopefully there isn't too much wind um, but yeah all of the pieces um, have upcycled fur um, the bark is foraged and found usually on the ground of course, we don't take the bark from live trees. Um, we, all of our stones are purchased from various, various ethical sites um, or on Etsy. Um, and yeah, so let's get straight into each of the piles. And if you are interested in any of the pendants, they are available on our Etsy shop and the link is in the description below. There are also, also tons of other um, upcycled healing jewelry on our website as well. So feel free to check that out. So, pile one, we have this beautiful pendant, and you can also uh, get a customized carving on the back if you order one of the pendants, and it's free and included, so you can get a rune or any kind of symbol carved into the back. So we have this beautiful moonstone and labradorite pendant here, hand carved for group one, group two. We have a labradorite pendant and another labradorite there. And these are mink fur, I believe. And group three, we have the moonstone again with moss agate and lapis lazuli. And we have the leather on the top there. And that's cowhide leather, I believe, upcycled. And again, you can get any one of these um, carved with a rune or like I said some kind of personalized symbol. So these are all available on the site. Feel free to connect with whichever pile resonates with you most and then we will get into the readings. I also have below uh, four separate element walks so that will be where your advice and guidance is. I'll take you on a walk in the forest and you can choose multiple elements or you can pick you know your element that's in your zodiac, your sun rising or your moon rising, whatever you feel connected to and that will give us the advice and guidance uh, further for the reading. So let's get straight into it. Hello group one if you chose this beautiful moonstone pendant. This is going to be your reading. And like I said, it's available on Etsy if you are interested. I'll put it right there. All right, so for starters, we're gonna get into your oracle cards and then we're gonna get into the tarot. And if you're interested in advice and guidance, those will be linked um, in the four elemental walks below. So where I connect with spirit, I connect with mother nature and I deliver you some advice and guidance. So we are asking who or what are you manifesting into your life right now? And so first from our Sufi oracle, we have speak out, communicate and solve the conflicts. Okay, so I'll put that right in the center. From the Wisdom of the Oracle, we have Imagine. Beautiful. From the Enchanted Maps, we have Home, number 27. That was number 20. From the Hidden Realms, we have Two. The Resting Tree, Patience and Stillness, number 22. And the Diamond Dreamer, Material Wealth, True Prosperity, number 6. And then from the Archangel Animals, we have the Tiger, Accept Your Magnificence, Archangel Raphael. From the Moonology, we have Take Time to Breathe Out, Disseminating Moon. Hopefully you can see that. And um, here, I'll just pull these up a little bit, just so that they're all in the image. And then from the Archangel Animals and Ancestors, we have Moon, Take Note of Intuitive Messages. Okay, let's just take a moment to take a deep breath, group one. We're just going to connect with this energy. 
and then take a deep breath out. Remember, we're connecting with our higher selves and we're taking only that which resonates with our situation. So who and what are you manifesting? Group one. I'm seeing that you're taking the time, group one. You're taking the time to realize what it is that you truly want in life. I think you're taking the time to step back from being maybe such an active player in your life, you're taking a step back and you're surrendering. You're trusting that whatever's meant to be will happen. And I think you're taking the time to imagine what it is that you would actually want your life to be. But I don't think that you're taking too many um, drastic like actions or any leaps. Like I think you're just, you're just kind of going with the flow and I think you're building. I think you're slowly but surely concocting and manifesting a de like a, a design in your mind of what you want your life to be who you want to be in your life and what you want it to be like a strategic plan in a sense but you're not making any sudden movements you're just dreaming you're imagining I feel like you're you're connecting with the idea of what home means to you. I feel like you're manifesting a home, whether that's a person or a place. I feel like you are manifesting the idea of a place that feels rooted and peaceful and safe. With this patience and stillness, I feel like you're taking the time to meditate on what home truly means to you. You're taking the time to breathe, taking the time to rest and trusting in the intuitive messages that are coming to you. You're desiring to be abundant and wealthy and not necessarily like monetarily speaking, but with regards to spirituality and just having enough via connecting with your soul, uh, making sure that your soul has enough, that your spirit has enough, that your heart has enough. And I feel like the best course of action for you is to be able to communicate what you truly desire. So you're manifesting the ability group one, to be able to speak your truth, to communicate and solve any issues, any confusion, any conflicts that have happened in the past. So I'm just going to quickly read the speak out card um, from the Sufi wisdom because it has powerful, profound messages in there. And then we're going to get into the tarot. So communicate and solve the conflicts. I want to sing like the birds sing, not worrying about who hears or what they think. Rumi. It does feel like you're less so thinking about what others desire from you, like the pressures of others, and you're focusing on what it is that you truly desire, what it is that you truly want, and focusing on your prosperity, your abundance. You're pulling your energy back. So here it says... This oracle comes to you with guidance and confirmation that you have a heart big enough to freely speak out what you keep inside without embarrassing or fearing that you might be ridiculed or scorned. The warm, blushing glow that surrounds you beckons to you a community of friends who will welcome you all, who want to share um, your desires with them. The messages from Sufi wisdom come with immense blessings and love. Personal relationships rely on communication in so many ways. And when you communicate freely with people in relationships, this will build trust and reduce conflicts. Stressful situations are often caused by our lack of willingness to speak out when we have the opportunity. You may be fearful or concerned that people will have a negative reaction to you sharing your ideas and insights. You may worry that others will ridicule you if you speak your truth. But dear one, you are saturated with, with a divine presence that is so rich that wants to pour out words to be freely spoken, your authentic truth. And by speaking out, you will solve so many problems that are caused by lack of confidence. So by helping others, people know your ideas you will be able to discover what other people want and need and adapt your ideas to match that the mantra is i am committing myself to be brave enough to speak out my thoughts and feelings honestly with others so this this reading it seems like you're manifesting the strength and the courage and the inner stillness to be able to speak your truth without worrying about being ridiculed okay you're manifesting the courage the authenticity and the, and, and the confidence to be able to come forward, accept your magnificence and be that tiger, be that brave, brave soul that is inside of you. 
and not let others step all over you, okay? Because in order to become strong, you need to pull your energy back and build, okay? You need to build a strong foundation. I'm seeing 22, which is also the, um, equates to the number four, which is about building a foundation, okay? So I do think that you're trusting your intuition and through that you are able to speak out your truth and communicate and solve the conflicts without worrying necessarily about others' opinions of you or others' expectations of you. You're imagining a world where you can speak freely and embody your authentic self and find your true home, not necessarily even a person or a place, but a home with inside you, a home where you feel safe and secure, group one. So this is beautiful energy. I'm just going to take these cards now and we're going to get into the tarot. All right, so who or what is group one manifesting? And this is the Shadowscape Tarot. Who or what is group one manifesting? It's such a beautiful, beautiful summer day outside right now, group one. The sun is shining. We have the two of pentacles. Now, I'm not going to take reversals, okay? So, we have the hermit. Excellent. This this goes exactly with what... Whoa! Exactly with regards to what we were saying. The sun. And on the bottom deck, we have the five of pentacles. Okay. And we're going to get some clarifiers for these. So, we're going to use the heaven and earth tarot. Why is the two of... Pen Whoops. It's too many. Why is the two of pentacles here? It seems like group one, you are juggling a lot of different things. We have the fool. So I mentioned that you weren't necessarily going to be taking many risks or it didn't seem like you were taking risks. Spirit is saying, maybe you might need to, but why is the hermit here? Why is the hermit here for what group one is manifesting? We have two that came out. We have the five of, um, the Five of Cups reversed, or sorry, the Five of Cups and the Ace of Swords. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Sorry, if it's hard to see here. And then the Sun. Why is the Sun here for Group One and who and what they are manifesting? We have another two that came out the Empress and the Seven of Swords. Okay. Ah, oh, you've got to speak your truth, Group One. I feel like you're maybe like hiding your feelings to a lot of people. We had too many come out. Well, no, the lovers was over there. So the four of pentacles, we have the lovers. And then on the bottom of the deck, we have the eight of cups, abandoned success. Oh, wait a minute. That was bottom deck energy. Okay, well, the lovers will just go here. In the corner. <laughs> Sorry for this confusion. Oh, right. So the two of pentacles, I feel like group one, you've been juggling a lot of different people's opinions about what it is that you should do. Um, and so I think it's really hard for you to manifest what it, what or who it is that you truly want, because there's so many different people speaking in your ear about what it is that you, um, should do or who it is that you should date or, you know, what path you should take. And I feel like group one, you're just almost fed up with it. You're like, fine, you know what? I'll do anything to just be able to break free and escape from this confusion. And that's why I think the fool is coming here because the fool is all about starting something new, taking a risk, taking that leap of faith into the unknown, okay? And I feel like this, like, look at this two of pentacles. This guy looks like the fool almost. He's juggling, um, he's juggling these pentacles and the fool often is seen as kind of like a juggler, you know, juggling ideas. And I feel like, you're juggling all these different ideas, but maybe they're not even your own ideas, group one. Some of them could be, but I feel like you're juggling other people's expectations or ideas or other people's desires of what they want you to do. Even in a relationship sense, maybe you're in a relationship where your person um, wants you to do these different things and you maybe don't feel like you resonate with those things, but you want to please your partner. So, you know, but I think that's why this, this five of cups is here because there's a loss of pleasure when you don't embody what it is that you truly desire or who it is that you truly want to be. There is this sense that you are not living your authentic self, that you are pouring your emotions into things that you do not truly want. 
Okay, group one, you need to pour your heart and soul into something that actually fulfills these cups, that fulfills you. Okay, so this fool is all about stepping back and taking a look at where it is that you want to take a risk. What is it that you truly want? What, what dreams do you want to actually fulfill in your life? Not other people's dreams, but what is it that you want to fulfill? Okay, so we have the hermit coming out next. The hermit is about taking the time to go within. And so I feel like spirit is saying you need to take the time to go within. Or you could be manifesting this, actually creating this. Um, so I, a lot of the time when we don't take the time for ourselves, oftentimes we will invoke illness and we will get sick. And that's the only way that we're actually able to go within and take the time to either meditate or take better care of ourselves. Sometimes it takes us getting actually physically ill before we're able to take that moment. I'm not saying that anybody here is physically ill yet, but I'm saying it's important. Spirit is saying you need to take the time to go within Take the time to figure out what it is that you truly want so that you can speak your truth. That's what the Ace of Swords is all about. The Ace of Swords is about cutting through that which no longer serves you, stepping up, speaking your truth, and not caring necessarily how many people you might hurt, but your truth is almost more important than, um, than just abiding to those opinions of others. Like, your your authentic truth, your bliss is more important than um, staying in this seven of swords energy where you're lying to yourself, where you're lying to yourself and just trying to please other people, okay? For the sun here, we have the empress and the seven of swords. So to me, group one, you have this powerful, powerful radiant soul that is dying to express itself there is something inside of you that is bursting to manifest into the material plane whether or not this is some sort of creative expression that you have if you're a musician if you're an artist if you're a teacher um, a spiritual being um, or somebody who is falling or somebody who wants to engage in some sort of you know passionate relationship there is this bubbling, bursting energy inside of you that has maybe been suppressed for a long time. And Spirit is saying, it's time for you to surrender to this energy. The sun, a lot of, a lot of times, is seen as a yang energy, you know, the masculine energy. But here you have the empress beneath it. And the empress is all about surrender. Okay? I love this, 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 this um, image of the Empress because she's sitting back on this beautiful throne. She has this lotus blossom in her hand. She has this crown. She has this harp. She's surrounded by wheat. She is fertile. She is abundant. She is glowing. I feel like, group one, this is the person that you are trying to become. You're trying to become this, this grounded, wealthy, abundant um, being who is just she looks like she's sitting back and she's surrendering. There's even these beautiful waterfalls behind her, okay? Which shows that her emotions are just flowing and she, she isn't judging them. She's just accepting them. But this Seven of Swords here, it shows that there's something in your life that you have been hiding, okay? There is some sort of truth that you have been hiding, Group 1, and it is so important that you learn to be able to express this. The sun is one of the highest cards of creative expression. It's the solar plexus. It's what um, our confidence is built out of. When we are connected to the sun, we feel confident, we feel powerful, we feel creative. And that's an active masculine energy coming through. So you're manifesting this balance between masculine and feminine. You're manifesting this this creative force that's able to burst through all of the deceit and lies that you've maybe been telling yourself and others. Maybe you've been telling others, oh yeah, I'll do this thing for you. Like, oh yeah, I'll take this job because you want me to. But it's not because you necessarily want to, group one. You need to find that thing that makes your heart sing. Otherwise, you will be living in the shadows of others for the rest of your life. And that's not why you're here. You're here to express this beautiful sun. Stop hoarding. See this four of pentacles? This is about hoarding, holding on to things um, because we're fearful that we might lose them. It's sort of a lack mentality. But the four of pentacles can also be seen about building something too. So the four of pentacles can be about building a new foundation, about building a structure. 
so that you can grow your new identity. But it can also be seen as lack. So take what resonates. Um, if you are in a lack mentality, know that there is this abundance, this sun waiting to be expressed. Okay. With this abandoned success, you could have tried a bunch of different things in your life. This is the eight of cups. We had also the five of cups. Now these cups are full or rather maybe they're not full. They're maybe empty. They're upright, but they're empty. And this, this being is kind of walking away from her cups and it just feels like maybe you've put so much energy and time into these cups that weren't actually serving you. And I know that I'm repeating this so, so many times, but it's important that you realize that you're trying, your soul is trying to manifest a reality where you are able to pour your heart and soul into something that will bring you the sun, that will bring you abundance. Okay. We have the lovers here too that came out. So the lovers is all about combining with some other energy and building something new, okay? With if this is someone that you're attracting into your life, you're attracting someone who might actually be able to help you um, express your authentic truth. This person might be able to bring out the light inside of you. If you've felt like you've been dark for so long and that you've been living in the shadows and you've been living... Um, trying to live up to other people's expectations, Spirit is saying you might be manifesting someone into your life who will actually help you break through these old behavior patterns, who will help you embody your true authentic self. So that's really exciting. And if you are in a relationship with someone who has been suppressing you or who has been taking um, your time, your energy and not giving back to you, you need to speak out. Okay, you need to communicate this. Speak your truth. You need to find out what your truth is, group one, and speak it because it is so important that we are being authentic with ourselves because at the end of the day, all we have is ourselves. And if we can't trust ourselves, then who can we truly trust? So this has been a very powerful, very powerful reading for you, group one. Um, if you'd like to check out the walks in the woods where you can actually get some advice and guidance on your current situation with regards to what you're manifesting, please feel free to uh, look at one of the elements. We have water, earth, fire, and air. So whatever sign you are, or you can pick whatever signs are kind of reoccurring in your chart, feel free to check those out. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming here. Thank you so much for sharing your energy and connecting. I hope this wasn't too much of a heavy reading for you, but um, that's the advice that came through. So thank you so much for being here and we will see you in the next reading. Bye. Hello group two and welcome to your reading. Today we are asking spirit who or what are you manifesting into your life? So we are outside right now. So I apologize for my shadow, but the sun keeps moving, of course, and the wind may be blowing, um, but that just might be a sign from spirit that we're in the, on the right track. So if you chose this beautiful labradorite pendant, this is going to be your reading. I'll just put it up here. And so first we're going to get into your pre-shuffled oracle cards, then we'll get into the tarot. And for your advice and guidance, we are going to go out on a spirit walk. Um, you have four elements to choose from, so fire, earth, air, and water. Um, you can choose all of them, you can choose one of them. Uh, the messages are fairly similar because, you know, there's a lot of collective energy spurring beneath the surface here. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get straight into your reading. From the Sufi Oracle, we have... Ooh, this is a fascinating card. Free will. Get out of your cocoon. Look at the powerful image. You've got this, this kind of like etheric feminine creature here climbing out of her, this womb almost. It's beautiful. Put that there. Hopefully you can see all of this. Let me see. Sorry about the shadows. I'll try to stick to the side. All right. From the Angels and Ancestors Oracle, we have Trader. Exchange energy to create abundance. Okay. Seems like there's a lot of expressive um, energy coming through here. All right. From the Moonology, we have Expect Powerful Change. New Moon Eclipse. Oh, that is a powerful card we have. 
From the Archangel animals, we have donkey. Keep your heart open no matter what. Archangels Mary and Gabriel. Oh my gosh. And I can feel like the sun shining down upon me right now. It is so, so, so warm. Oh my gosh. There's a lot of like confidence and power coming to you guys, group two. The eyes of beauty from the hidden realms. Positive expectations, clarity, number 25. And we had two come out. Actually, for every group, we had two come out. The Well Watcher. Wisdom, Power of the Divine, number seven. There's a lot of really beautiful feminine energy coming through here. But I also see really positive masculine um, energy, too. From the Enchanted Maps, we have Heal the Ouch, number 38. And from the Wisdom of the Oracle, number three, Between Worlds. Okay. All right. I'm just going to sit up here. So you can see all your cards in the sun. All right, let me see. We're just going to take a moment, group two, to connect with this energy. So let's take a deep breath in. And we're connecting to our higher selves and spirit right now to deliver the messages. Sorry, I had to kill a mosquito. There's too many. Um, and we're just going to release that which no longer serves us and take the messages that resonate and leave the rest. So it might get a little hot and I might actually have to pause and move the cards just in case it gets too warm out here. Um, but let me see, what am I seeing? I'm seeing, group two, that you are, that you might have been in hermit mode for the past little while. You might have been going within, but I feel like there is this beautiful, confident, powerful being that is ready to be born into the material world. Okay, you have this, divine power that's getting ready to express itself through you we have the eyes of beauty so there's this clarity this beauty coming through it's as almost as if you you are shedding the old skin of this old self it feels like physically mentally spiritually it's reaching all aspects of your being and you are shedding all of these things and you are becoming new with the heel the ouch it's like you have gone within and had so much healing, whether you've been healing ancestral wounds or ancestral traumas or just anything that's happened in your life, relationships, you know, physical ailments, you, group two, have worked so hard to heal yourself and you are being reborn. It's almost like I'm seeing like, I don't want to say Twilight, but you know, when Bella is bit by, by the vampire or sorry, like by Edward and she is transforming into this like new being, she almost dies, right? She almost dies before she is reborn into this supernatural being. Sorry to use that as an example, but you know, um, we have the donkey, keep your heart open. So it's, it's, this is all about opening up expanding, reaching beyond that, which you maybe didn't even know existed, right? reaching beyond the limitations that maybe were like input into you by society, by family, by, um, by the world at large. But no, you're breaking through these old patterns. You're creating abundance with the trader here. You're learning to work with like minds. You might be attracting your soul family right now, needing people um, that you, you feel like you just click with without even really knowing them. You just meet them and you're like, this is a kindred spirit. This is somebody who I can share my energy with, who I can create something with in this reality, in this dimension. You're manifesting um, these opportunities. You're manifesting your soul family, group two. You're manifesting people who you can um, relate to, who you can experience authentic communication with rather than surface level, rather than, you know, this, this falsity, you're creating something where you can feel your soul sing. You're freeing yourself from any shackles, any expectations that were put upon you and you are breaking free from this and you are living out your truth. Okay, that is why you've spent however long kind of going within like this dark, you can see the dark moon here, right? You can tell that the sun behind is about to explode out the side here. And with the free will, like this this golden solar plexus energy that is surrounding the womb. There's a lot of this kind of um, coloring here with the dark and the light. Between worlds, we have the shadow realm and we have the color realm. So it's like 
there's two separate um, versions of yourself right now. There's the version of the old you and the version of the new you that is being born. And so you're seeing both sides from a new perspective, but you're learning to accept the old you. You can even see this person inside this um, flamingo here. You can see a person's face. Half is in the shadow, half is in the light. Okay, you're learning to trust both sides. This is such beautiful energy group two. You're connecting to the divine. You're manifesting the ability for you to find clarity, find truth, create craft and create this new identity and free yourself. There's, this is a dance of freedom. This is a dance of um, your heart chakra coming to life. So we're just going to read um, the free will um, messages from the book because like I said before, really powerful, powerful messages from these, um, from the Sufi wisdom. So free will, once I find it, get out of your cocoon. Deep in the sea are riches beyond compare, but if you seek safety, it is on the shore. So it's like you're leaving that which you found familiar and you're expanding your horizons into the unknown because that is where your soul growth is, group two. My dear friend, you are living in a time when new experiences, opportunities, energies, and growth possibilities are available. Staying too long within the limits of what is perceived as safe ground can breed wariness. And the only way to participate in the new is to get out of the routine of old energy and pathways. That is literally what we're saying. The oracle has a great message. The secrets of the kingdom are within you. The treasures of your own potential are just waiting to enrich the experiences of your life. If you are reluctant to try something new or hesitant to take a risk, you will be left on the shore and miss the fun of being creative and developing your ability. So circle around. Using the same processes and getting the same results means that you're just repeating old patterns. You need to change your intention to focus on where you would truly like to go in life. Sufi wisdom is about surrendering with joy and trusting that you will land safely where you are focusing. Making changes can help you reach your goals and work past anxieties and grow as a result. Okay, sorry, my dog is coming into the camera. Sorry, Winnie, you can't do that. The mantra is, I will emerge from the cocoon of safety I have built around me and spread my wings to try something new that will help me live a more creative life. Okay, so you're literally that. Literally, you're literally getting ready to express your true, authentic, beautiful, magnificent self. And you're getting ready to share this being with others. You're finally getting ready to spread your authentic truth with the world. So I feel like group two is actually just a continuation of group one. For those of you who don't feel like you're entering into this energy yet, you might still be in group one. You might want to check that reading out. But otherwise, group two, this is so exciting. So we're going to get into your tarot now. And then if you're looking for advice and guidance about this situation of what you're manifesting or who, then you can look at the spirit walk that we're going to go on. So, oh my gosh, yeah, there's been so much healing that's been happening group, group two. And I feel like, like I said, you are manifesting your soul family into your life. This is so exciting. Hopefully I don't get heat stroke out here now that I have my dog on top of me. Oh my gosh. So we're going to get into the shadowscape tarot and we're going to ask who or what is group two? Whoa, manifesting. That is like so many cards, but you know what? We're going to take them all because, okay, Winnie, you can't, you can't be here. Sorry guys. She really wants to be a part of your reading. Okay, we have the Six of Swords. That's literally about leaving behind the old and embodying the new, okay? You're leaving the familiar shores and setting off on a new adventure with the Six of Swords here. Hopefully you can see it and I'm not too... Here, I'll try to stick to the right. We also have the Page of Pentacles. So I like to see the Page of Pentacles as the start of a new material venture. So you could be manifesting some sort of new project, new opportunity, um, new relationship into your life with the Page of Pentacles. We have the Three of Cups. That's all about celebration. So you could be celebrating with your soul family. When you finally get together with your soul family, you guys could be celebrating your reunion. We have the Page of Swords. Okay, so there's a lot of, I feel like, new ideas coming to you. Because when you change your perspective and you come out of your cocoon after a long gestation like that, I feel like there is a lot of new wisdom, a lot of, um, there's just 
so many new opportunities that are going to be coming forth for you that you didn't maybe see in the past, group two. And the bottom deck energy, we have the two of pentacles. Okay, so I feel like, group two, you're at a stage right now where because you are leaving behind the old and coming into the new, you're juggling all the different opportunities. You've been manifesting Yes, you've been manifesting maybe a soul family, um, maybe subconsciously, but you're manifesting um, a place where you can grow, something where you can put your energy to productive use, some place where you can celebrate your, your creations, some place where you can speak your truth, and a place where you can build, um, like build, uh, build your business or build your, your creative um, expression like if you're an artist or a musician or whatever you are you're you're sowing the seeds right now the page of pentacles is kind of i like to see the page as a beginner an amateur in a way somebody with fresh eyes somebody looking um out at a new venture like with a fresh with a fresh perspective but here you also have the owl and i see the owl as wisdom so there is this intuitive wisdom inside of you group two this intuitive wisdom that you know where to put this energy you know um, how to express yourself you need to trust in that okay but we're going to get some clarifiers um this is really really uh satisfying energy so oh that's too many six of swords group two for who or what is group two manifesting? The six of swords, spirit. Why is the six of swords here? That's too many. We were um, using the Thoth Crowley Tarot. So we have the eight of cups, indolence for the six of swords, which kind of makes sense. Like you're leaving behind this idea um, because I feel like the eight of cups is all about filling other people's cups and you're not receiving, you know, the same energy and, you know, the same energy and care that you put into others you're not receiving that back from these people you could be dealing with maybe narcissists I feel like narcissists are they're very you know seductive they're very charming um, but they do take a lot of energy especially from empaths um, so yeah you're 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 leaving behind this old energy of giving without receiving and you're you're going to put your energy into a place group two where you actually will receive the abundance you will receive that validation you will receive that that love okay whether it's your soul family whether it's um it could be working with your soul family on a project it could be um just working on your creations you know you're going to be putting your energy into something that is actually going to reap the benefits so the page of pentacles spirit why is it too many i think i need to go get a hat so i'm just going to pause this for a sec guys it's a bit hot Okay, sorry guys, it's just getting really, really toasty out here. All right, so Page of Pentacles, spirits. Can you clarify the Page of Pentacles for what is group two manifesting or who is group two manifesting? All right, we have, ooh, the Queen of Cups. <gasps> Beautiful, oh, that's so stunning, okay. Yeah, I feel like group two, you are manifesting the ability to see your emotions from a higher perspective or you're manifesting somebody into your life who is very emotionally mature okay so in the past if you've been dealing with you know people who have been very immature and who've just been kind of out for their own their own gratification and whatnot you're about to connect with somebody or your own um, emotions in a way where you can see things See your emotions from a higher perspective and Winnie sorry my dog is here again um, yeah see things from a higher perspective and just connect with your emotions without getting lost in them group two that's beautiful in fact your soul family there might be a lot of beings in your soul family who are actually very emotionally mature you might even meet people who are like a lot younger than you would expect but these beings are actually very mature for their age. They could just be old souls. So why is the three of cups here? What is group two going to be celebrating? What is group two going to be celebrating? Because clearly you're manifesting some sort of, some sort of celebration. That's too many. Who or what is group two manifesting? Oh my gosh. 
We have the Two of Cups coming out. Oh, there's two cards here. I swear. Is there two? It's just a very old card. We have the Two of Cups, and we know that's love. So you're going to be celebrating. You're going to be celebrating love. This is soulmate energy. So your soul family, within that, you might actually be meeting your soulmate. You might be meeting a soulmate or more than one soulmate. And you might all just be celebrating together, rejoicing in the fact that you finally found each other. You finally found your soul tribe. People who you can actually resonate with, connect with. People who want to create and craft and live in the same dream that you want to live in. This is a very, very powerful, powerful um, reading because you have like the, like you have the Eight of Cups, so you're no longer giving to people who are not a part of your soul tribe, right? These old relationships that are falling apart that no longer serve you. You're coming into this Queen of Cups energy or you're meeting this kind of Queen of Cups uh, person who is emotionally mature, emotionally available, somebody who can help you resonate with your own soul purpose, your own soul mission, and you're going to come together with them in celebration. This is just beautiful. Okay, why is the Page of Swords here, Spirit? The Page of Swords. Why is the Page? Oh, we have Death, number 13. So I believe this is Cancerian energy, and then we have Scorpio energy for Death. Um, with all these cups, we have lots of water energy. So Scorpio, Pisces, and um, Cancer. Swords energy um, is, of course, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, and Earth energy, Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. Yeah, so no fire energy thus far. Bottom deck energy is the Eight of Swords. Okay, let's see. With the death card here, I feel like there is some sort of, like in conjunction with the two of cups, I do see that there is an old relationship that is falling away and it is leaving room for this rebirth, okay? This renewal. We have the free will, right? Freeing yourself, getting out of your cocoon to connect with this new energy, this new people, this new soul that is coming into your life that is going to bring you such joy, such bliss, such connection, okay? And often, you know, saying goodbye to people, releasing people from our past is so painful. It's so hard. It's like, it's like sucking out the venom from a wound. But when the venom is poisoning, poisoning us slowly, you know, it's, it's important. We have to pull it out. We have to pull out the tumor. We have to pull out the thing that's, that's hurting us, even though initially it will hurt. It's the thing that will save us. So I do feel like group two, you are coming into this connection with somebody so beautiful, somebody so powerful, somebody so confident and in alignment with you that you, it's not that you'll forget about this old uh, person, this person from your past or these people from your past, but you won't need them anymore because you'll have connected with yourself at a deep, deep level from meeting these other people. Sometimes when we meet our soul family, it helps us shine lights on a, a parts of ourselves that we didn't even know were there. Or it helps us to shine lights on parts of ourselves that we've hidden from ourselves when we're children. You know, like parts of ourselves that we loved to be when we were kids, you know, playing make believe and pretend and all these things. A lot of the time we hide these parts of ourselves. We hide this kind of free spirited nature, this um, humorous nature or this like what's the word mischievous nature we hide it from the world because it's seen it's demonized but um at the same time you might meet somebody in your in your soul family that helps bring out these characteristics you know that mischievous side that kindred spirit that fun um playful side that you forgot was there so i do feel like you are manifesting joy you're manifesting uh a reunion of souls into your life. You're manifesting beautiful people, beautiful connections. Winnie, you might be manifesting a pet into your life. Sorry. Or you might have an old pet who is, who is telling you it's okay to get a new pet. Winnie, you need to get out. Sorry. My dog is like obsessed with just being a part of these readings. She's a very spiritual being. I see her as an angel, actually. Aren't you an angel? 
Here, I'll just show it to you. I'll show her to you guys. This is Winnie. And she is a little angel. And so you might be um, connecting to a new animal spirit. You might have animal spirits that are going to come and help you throughout your life. Your soul family could be animals. It could be animal beings. So this is a beautiful reading. If you want to get advice and guidance about this, about your situation, about these manifestations, um, there will be four different element walks to choose from below where I take you guys out into nature and we just kind of connect with the nature spirits. Um, I'm just going to channel a little bit and get some information and some guidance for you guys. So those will be linked below um, in the description. And so you'll be able to choose between fire, earth, air, and water. If you have those placements, um, you can choose whichever one you feel resonates with you or you can pick all of them. So thank you so much, group two, for being here. If you found this reading helpful, please feel free to like, subscribe to the channel, um, leave a message if this reading was helpful, and we would love to hear from you. So thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, angels, ancestors, spirit team. Thank you, Mother Earth. And thank you, beautiful Labradorite, for helping us to channel these messages. And we will see you guys in the next reading. Bye! Hello, Group 3. If you chose this beautiful moonstone bark pendant, this is going to be your reading. And today we are asking Spirit, who or what are you manifesting into your life? So if you feel connected to this pendant at all, it'll be available on our Etsy shop, which I will link in the description. Um, so we're going to get straight into our Oracle cards, then we'll get into our tarot, and then you can look for your advice and guidance in one of the four elemental spirit walks below the video. So also we are outside as you can probably tell and so if there's a lot of wind or noises I apologize but it's just such a beautiful day so I felt like we should connect with our beloved nature spirits so your first card from the Sufi Oracle is willpower improve your willpower to reduce your stress level I'll just put that right there push that into the grass um, from the Archangel or sorry angels and ancestors we have sage be devoted and committed now, I hope you can see all these cards here. Don't want to miss out. I think you can mostly see them. From the Moonology, we have, what do you need to release? From the Archangel Animals, we have Camel, be forbearing and patient. Just place them here like that. From the Hidden Realms, we have the Cosmos, creativity, vastness, number 41. And we had two come out for that. The Ringmaster of Scrutiny. Discernment, clear vision, details, number nine. Sorry about the wind coming through here, you guys. Just hopefully you can see all of those guys. And then from the Enchanted Maps, we have Slow and Steady, number 12. And the Wisdom of the Oracle, we have Co-Create, number 40. Oh, wow, guys, this is some beautiful, beautiful creative energy we have here coming through group three you guys are creating something or you're manifesting the ability to craft and create that's what it seems like i just want to make sure we can see all of your cards okay so let's just take a moment to connect with our this energy connect to our higher selves and take a deep breath in and a deep breath out And we're just going to take that which resonates and leave the rest and release that which no longer serves us. So I'm seeing that you're being tested. Your commitment is being tested. I'm surprised that didn't come out in our moonology, but this is about willpower. This is about discipline. This is about you being able to manifest your creative um, passions into reality. That's what I'm seeing here, group three. So if you're not crafting and creating something um, material, you're definitely crafting and creating something in the metaphysical. Um, and maybe it'll take place in the physical eventually, but um, it doesn't necessarily have to be creative. It could be maybe you're trying to discipline yourself to have um, new 
healthy habits. Like maybe you're trying to jog every day. Maybe you're trying to manifest the ability to meditate every day, manifest the ability to eat healthier, to um, put up boundaries in certain relationships with others. But this is about having the power to make the decisions for yourself to help reduce your stress, okay? And when you can trust yourself, when you know that you're going to be able to fall back on you, then everything starts to fall into place because you are the person, you are the main person in your life who you need to trust, who you need to listen to. If we can't trust ourselves, who can we truly trust, right? So getting to know thyself, getting to know who and what you truly are. And that may take a lot of introspection, okay? That might take a lot of inner work, a lot of meditation. But Spirit is saying it's time to release these thought patterns, these behaviors that no longer serve you in order for you to manifest this, um, this, create, this creation. Because it seems like you're really, really trying uh, to stay committed to something. You're really trying to be like, look at this, slow and steady, stay committed and devoted. Okay, you're really trying to put this energy into something. You're really trying to manifest the ability to take the time. If you are a very disciplined person, Spirit is saying, great, you're going to be able to manifest this creativity, manifest this divine connection with Spirit so that you can be um, the paintbrush, so to speak, for the divine on the 3D plane. You are, um, you are the artist of the creator in a sense. And if you are are having trouble creating because you're having trouble staying focused and disciplined, Spirit is saying it's important to take steps and be patient with yourself, okay? It's about being clear on what it is that you want. So if you want to, for example, um, start a tarot channel, well, do you have the tarot decks? Do you have oracle decks to work with? right? Do you have, do you actually know what the tarot cards mean? You know, like there's steps to take. If you're looking to, you know, start, if you want to be a musician, well, do you know how to play like an instrument? If you do, well, that's great. Start practicing it, right? Take the necessary steps that you need to take. I find that it's really important to write out all of the things that are, you know, rumbling around in my, around in the head and, and figure out what it is that of those things that I really resonate with deeply right then and there. What do I feel most connected with? Do I feel passionate about that? If so, I'll take that energy, that passion, and I'll use that as fuel for my creations. Okay, so if you're feeling passionate about something, use that energy. But Spirit is saying, yes, it's very important to, to take the time, to commit the time, and focus and just trust that if you take each step carefully, you will be able to bring this dream to fruition. So as White Feather Tarot says, which I love, little by little, a little becomes a lot. And so with any creation, putting a little bit of energy into it every day will create this masterpiece in the long run. And maybe you're actually going to be working with others. There's this co-create card here. You have the owl and the leopard. And maybe you need to work together with someone else. 40, number four, is the emperor card. It's about building, okay? It's about building strong foundations um, so that you can bring an idea into fruition. So we're going to get into the tarot now. Actually, first, before we do that, I'm going to read to you this willpower card from the Sufi Oracle, okay? Because very powerful messages from this particular uh, deck. So we have improve your willpower to reduce your stress. Show me your face so I would be free from desire to see the roses. Stand tall so I would see nothing but you, the lofty cypress of my garden. No matter how much you hurt me, Havis, would never turn away from you. For I found my freedom the moment I became a captive of your love. A life-changing moment has come to you in the fire of transformation and is calling you to say yes to love with your full will and conscious awareness. Haviz is here to free your heart from temptation by guiding you to see the beauty of the beloved. When your heart shines with courageous love, you will have the capacity to override unwanted thoughts, feelings, or impulses. By surrendering to love, you will have the willpower to resist short-term gratification. When loving becomes your habit, it draws little if any willpower from you and frees up more energy for other things. 
So yeah, it's about putting love into the work that you do, group three. So not relying on what other people are necessarily saying so much, like not relying on what they want and their expectations. But what is it that you want? What is it that you desire? What is it that you love? Right? Because when you're connected to that which you love, your passion, your bliss, that's where you find divine inspiration. That's where you have the fires of creativity to craft what it is that you truly want. Um, it's time to make a choice about your reason for being and what your life will stand for. If you feel that stress and normal self-control have depleted your resources, it's because you only have so much willpower. So let's see what options you have for increasing this willpower. This oracle is a guide for you to manage your stress by spreading love so you can increase your ability to resist pressure from others to follow a path that is not right for you. Being under high stress levels of, means your body energy is used up acting impulsively and making decisions based on short-term outcome so your mantra is i can manage my stress level and direct my willpower to follow love okay so stop putting your energy into other things that aren't giving back to you that's something that we said in group two and group one actually it's a very um collective message here but what do you need to release what is no longer serving you group three and, and be methodical, slow and steady, so that you know where to put your energy. And be devoted to you. I think it's really saying that you need to be committed and devoted to your willpower, to focus, to disciplining your own mind so that you can make your creative dreams come true. Because if we have a dream, that's great. But if we do not have a practical plan and the discipline to do it, we'll never accomplish our dreams. So it's really important to make a plan to manifest your dreams into reality. I'm basically telling myself this too because I have so many creative projects right now and I'm having such trouble actually managing any of them. So it's very useful messages for everyone. So what do we have coming out? We have the tower. Okay, the empress. Oh my gosh, group three. We've got some powerful energy coming through here with the major arcana. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh, okay, that's a lot of cards. Too many, too many. What is group three manifesting or who is group three manifesting into their life? Okay. I wasn't going to take, you know what? I'm going to take this one that flipped up. We have the Ace of Cups, the Empress and the Tower. And our bottom deck energy is the Four of Wands. <gasps> Beautiful. So the Four of Wands is also seen as completion. It's a celebration. It's a completion of something and um, celebrating it with others. And I see with this Ace of Cups here, I feel like you're getting ready to... There's a new emotional beginning coming through here. Okay? I feel like if you haven't been through this Tower moment yet, there could be some sort of Tower moment coming. But for those of you who have been through some sort of painful upheaval in your life something that has maybe shattered reality for you and has brought everything crumbling down for those of you who have been through this event spirit is saying that from the pieces from the from the dust from the ashes of this explosion you have surrendered Okay, you have connected to this divine feminine energy and you are surrendering. You're, you're having faith and trust that your spirit, your soul knows where to go. That the creations that are about to flow through you are in the name of love. Okay, that love is the only thing that is worth anything in this life. In the end, we don't get to take any of our possessions with us. Okay? You won't see a U-Haul truck behind a hearse because you cannot take possessions with you into the next dimension. Love is what remains. Love is what we take. When we lose loved ones, what's left? But the love that we had for them in our heart. And so, group three, you are celebrating Regardless of what has happened, you're celebrating that you have made it through this challenging time. 
And it's made you more beautiful. It's made you more receptive. It's made you more giving. Because a lot of the time when we have things taken from us, it makes us feel so grateful, so appreciative for what we do have. And I think you're really, really seeing that, group three. I think you're really coming to terms with the fact that even though you might only have a little bit, it is, it seems like so much, okay? So let's get some clarifiers. Sorry if that message is kind of weird. Um, but yeah, so that was coming out. Let's see, what do we have for our clarifiers? For the tower, for the tower, for who and what group three is manifesting. Sorry, what I mean to me, like what I mean to say with what you're manifesting is like, you're manifesting strength, you're manifesting courage, you're manifesting this new beginning where you have, um, where you've come through this, this tower moment. And if you haven't had the tower moment, you're manifesting a tower moment so that you can actually give love in the way that feels right within your soul. Okay, so for the tower, we have the five of swords. Okay, so you're going to stop fighting. I feel like you're going to start stop fighting with so other people. You're going to stop fighting with yourself. You're going to stop feeling defeated. Okay, you're going to let go of that energy because that doesn't serve you. Feeling hopeless, feeling useless, it doesn't serve you. Spirit, why is the Empress here? For what group three is manifesting? We have the Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups in this deck is luxury. But a lot of the time it can be seen as kind of a stagnant energy. Like you're fulfilled. You have everything that you need. But there's no passion. There's no divine inspiration. You're just kind of sitting back. And that's not necessarily bad. It's it's maybe a good place to be for manifesting because you are content in a way. You just don't want to become too attached to that contentment, too attached to feeling um, that satisfaction because over time it will become dull, right? So the Empress is... I feel like the Empress is feeling satisfied. She's feeling grateful. She's feeling connected. And she knows that her life isn't going to stay in this one place forever. But she's here now and she is... She's just accepting. If nothing like crazy is happening right now, group three, that's okay. And if something crazy was happening, maybe you're just taking a moment to take a break. And that's okay too. Ace of Cups, what do we have? We have the Eight of Cups. Okay, so in the past, I do feel... This has come out for every group actually. The Eight of Cups is about giving to beings that aren't giving back. That's what I feel like. It's like giving your energy, giving your love to other beings and not receiving that same bounty back to you. And with the Ace of Cups here, I feel like it's this energy. You're trying to manifest a reality where you're no longer just giving your energy away. You're trying to manifest a reality where you are pouring your energy into someone or something that actually gives back to you. And that is a very common message that I've received for all three groups because I do feel like we're dealing with collective energy here I'm getting like so many different messages coming through right now I do feel like for some of you there is a new relationship that is coming through and you are going to um, develop a very strong friendship I feel and if you are coming back together with other people you might be rekindling some old friendships but from a new perspective Okay, bottom deck energy is the star, so Aquarius energy, beautiful, oh my goodness, yeah, with the star here, I feel like you're, all this work and effort that you're putting into this group three, if it's felt like it hasn't been paying off, I feel like you are about to celebrate your success. Okay, with this willpower here, just keep going. Just stay focused. 
stay disciplined. This tower moment may have thrown you off your course. You may have had an idea of what it was that you were doing and then this tower moment happened and it just kind of threw everything around and you felt kind of lost and confused. But spirit is saying, no, just, just focus, just know that you are where you're meant to be. And if you need to take the time to meditate, if you need to take the time to ground yourself, that's okay. That's okay because the beings that that are meant to be in your life will show up for you, okay? They will show up for you. They will be there to celebrate you. For those beings who are, are feeling jealousy over your successes or they're, they're, they're envious over this, this star-like being who you are becoming, you don't need to concern yourself with them. In fact, sometimes people envying you can be seen as a form of flattery. You're doing something right. You're living out the dream that other people wish they could do. If you're having this this commitment, if you're showing up and, and you're having this commitment, no matter what is throwing you off, that's power, group three. And you're a powerful being. And to be able to be here after everything that you've been through, to be able to, to show up and to still keep trying, Spirit is saying, wow, that's incredible. So I think you're manifesting this creation. You're manifesting this, this powerful creation, whatever it is into your life, this, this artistry, this soul connectedness where you're able to express your divine, um, your divine birthright in a sense, your story. Spirit is saying, you're almost there. You just need to keep going and trust that if you surrender, spirit will help you. You just need to know that spirit is always has your back. And there are people and beings out there who are willing to help you. Okay? So stay connected. Okay? Stay connected to your higher self. Because you are this divine star light being. Okay? I see that within you, group three. You have the power. You have it. And I know you do. So get ready to celebrate. A lot of abundance is coming your way. And I'm just so grateful that you were able to come here and share your energy with me. So thank you. So if you're looking for more advice and guidance, please feel free to um, check out one of the walks below or all four if you want to. Um, each, each walk has a different element. So fire, earth, air, and water. So whatever element you feel connected to, perhaps it's your sun sign, maybe it's your moon sign, maybe it's just an element that shows up a lot in your natal chart whatever it is, feel free to check those out. Um, but if you're leaving me here, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for sharing your energy. Thank you, spirit team, ancestors, angels for coming through today. Beautiful nature spirits. Um, if you like this reading, like it, comment, um, subscribe to us. We'd love to have you here. Sorry if we're not able to post as often as we'd like to, but there's a lot going on right now. Um, a lot of upheavals, a lot of tower moments, but we're all working through it. So thank you so much. And we will see you in the next reading. Bye. Hello, magical fire beings, and welcome to your walk in the woods. Today we are connecting with mother nature. We are connecting with the elements. We are connecting with plants creatures, all manner of beings here. And we are asking, what do our beloved fire signs need to know? What do we need to hear? What motivation, what guidance can we gather from Mother Earth? So you could be a fire sign, you could be a Leo, Sagittarius or Aries, or you could have those placements. And today we are just connecting. So it just rained. And then the sun came out and it's just absolutely fascinating the alchemical energy that I'm feeling right now. I feel like a lot of you fire signs are opening yourselves up more than you ever have before. I feel like you are finding your inner light. You are finding that fire that you have maybe um, lost throughout your life. You are finding that again, that energy, that vitality. Now be careful because fire can be an extremely chaotic and destructive energy, but it's also creative. It's also powerful. It's also 
it rebirths so much. So, I feel like if you use this passion and creativity and you fuel it into something, you will reap so many of the benefits. Any inspiration that you're feeling right now, any divine guidance that is coming through fire signs, use it. Use it, but ground it. The, I feel like with the wind coming through that you're having a lot of ideas, just a lot of um, inspiration that could be coming through. Look, look, even more so, spirit is agreeing. A lot of you fire signs are feeling so many um, ideas. You're feeling this magic brewing inside of you. And maybe you've never felt this before. Maybe this is new. Maybe you're not sure actually how to manifest and take this power that you're feeling, this, this passion, and ground it into some sort of um, creative outlet. Maybe there's a relationship that you're having that's brewing and you're unsure like what steps to take next because... You know, maybe you've never felt this way or maybe you're unsure of your desires and you're questioning yourself, but you know, and spirit is agreeing again. But there is a deeper, deeper, deeper knowing fire signs that you will feel. A deeper sense of what it is that you truly desire. The cornerstone of who and what you are, the foundations. It's important for all signs to go out into the woods and actually take the time to connect with mother nature, to take the time to connect with our beloved stones, the rocks, the oldest beings on planet earth. The stones are what ground us, the roots that crawl into the stones underneath, which we cannot see, but the the roots of these trees actually eat the stones they break them apart into tiny little um, molecules so that they can consume them and and use that nutrients to grow into these mighty beings here now these beautiful mullen which are actually surprisingly uh dried up and dead now but they have all these seeds and they're waiting they're waiting to drop their seeds they're waiting to drop their seeds for the opportune moment But they don't need a lot of water. That's the powerful thing about them. They don't need much water to survive. And so maybe, maybe you felt in the past, fire signs, that that you needed emotion to drive you or that you were relying too heavily on your emotions to guide you where you need to go. And that's an important element. Our emotions are somewhat um, of a navigational system for our human bodies. They tell us what we like, what we don't like, but oftentimes our emotions have been crafted since we were children of what was right and what was wrong and what we will um, be rewarded with if we do the right thing and whatnot. So emotions are are a vital part, but our rational and logical minds are, are also very valid too. So we have to take all the pieces. We have to take our intuition. We have to take the logic. We have to take our emotions. We have to take all of these. And we have to craft an idea, craft a manifestation out of this. So you might need to go and take the time to go within. I know that the 3D world is so vibrant, so colorful, so... um, What's the word? (laughs) It's easy to distract yourself with the 3D world. But the 3D world is only half the battle. You are a multidimensional being, fire signs. You're a multidimensional being who is connected to something so much deeper than this 3D realm. And you'll be able to be your authentic, true 3D self if you're connected to that other higher dimensional force. So it's important to connect to your higher self. I'm just noticing this beautiful moss here. This beautiful, beautiful emerald moss. And emerald moss, I often see it as like the color of the heart chakra. So for a lot of you fire signs, maybe you've been distracting yourself with passion, with lust, with romance. And Spirit is saying, that's okay, that's great, that's fantastic. 
That is nutrients for our soul's growth. But at the same time, you've got to come back in, ground yourself again, and cleanse uh, your soul of the 3D exuberance so that you can know where next to put your energy. Because I noticed something, that our emotions change rapidly. We can want something one day and then the next day not even care. So why would we put all this energy into something and then we don't even want it the next day? So it seems like a waste of time. But there is this underlying desire, this underlying dream that you might have. And maybe you don't even know what it is, fire signs. But there are little tidbits that are being left along your path. Little tiny symbols. They could come to you in your dreams. They could come to you when you're on a walk in the city or in Mother Nature. They could come to you in so many different ways. And I'm seeing that you're learning to be able to connect your shadows, those lost parts of yourself, to your 3D self again. You're able to see them for what they are. They're no longer locked away deep in the darkness. You're able to walk through your shadows and pull them into the light. And that is such a powerful, powerful um, force to have. Because to be connected to fire and to be connected to our darkness is how we become a balanced being, is how we become someone who can move between realities, move between the spiritual into the 3D. Oh, and hello. Are you seeing this little squirrel? So the squirrel is eating something, which makes me feel like it's time to enjoy yourself, fire signs. Okay, don't feel bad for taking the time to enjoy yourself. It's not all about hard work, but it is about balance. So enjoy yourself, see things from a higher perspective. Hi, buddy. He's like, don't get too close to me. Yeah, take the time to enjoy yourself. Take the time to have fun. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're here to do. Life is a game. Life is a ride. It's about enjoying yourself. It's, you see people who work their whole lives, their whole lives, and then they die on retirement day. So isn't it better to have fun and enjoy yourself? Maybe you're making less money. Maybe people look down on you because you're poor. Who knows what it is? But if you're having fun, if you're being your true authentic self and connecting with Earth, you're connecting with this planet that we are so fortunate to be a part of, then you're close. You're living as authentically as you can. And that's why we're here, to find that self-awareness of who and what we are and connect with this gorgeous planet. So thank you so much, fire signs. Thank you so much for sharing your energy and alchemizing this potential that you have and growing into whatever it is that you're going to become. You already are this magical, passionate being, and I can't wait to see what you become. So thank you so much. Take time to connect with your Mother Earth, ground yourself, and you will watch as your manifestations unravel by the millions. So thank you for coming on this walk. Thank you, nature spirits. Thank you, fire spirits. And we will see you in the next walk. Bye. Hello, magical earth beings, and welcome to another walk in the woods with spirit. Today we are connecting with mother nature. We are connecting with our beloved plant beings. We are connecting with any creatures who might come into our path. And we are asking spirit, what do our beloved earth signs need to hear today? What advice, guidance, what motivation is going to come through um, the trees, the wind, the elements? So you could be an earth sign, you could be a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, you could have those placements, um, but everyone is welcome here. So today we are taking a walk in the woods and first and foremost, 
I am just like drawn to these beautiful raspberries. So it is the beginning of August in the Northern Hemisphere and we have beautiful, beautiful bounty here. And so I think beautiful earth spirits that you are about to reap a lot of benefits. Okay, there is a harvest coming in soon for you earth signs. You have been manifesting, you have been building something and you're about to see it come to fruition. So perhaps you've been putting time and energy into a relationship. Um, maybe you've been putting time and energy into projects, into different artistic endeavors. And Spirit is saying you're just about to like come into a lot of bounty. It's going to be like a little bit at first, but then you're just going to keep seeing more and more and more abundance coming your way okay earth spirits so don't if you feel like there's a dry spell or you feel like um you're just like getting tired and there isn't enough energy to put any more into into this um project into this manifestation know that spirit has your back okay know that the amount of time and energy that you have put into this will come tenfold back to you, okay? That which you put in, you will receive because this is a very fruitful time right now. We are currently in the sign of Leo, so it's August, and the fiery um, creative passions are happening now. So if you've been feeling lost, Spirit is saying it's time to try to get outside, connect with Earth spirits, ground yourself into Earth, Okay, now for a lot of Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus beings, we really like to connect with our earth element. We really like the taste of food. We really like our pleasures. Um, so Spirit is saying, yes, that's great. But maybe you might need a bit of moderation for some of you. If you've been feeling like you're just, you're just diving into things and you're just getting lost in the hedonistic pleasures of say alcohol and substances and food and everything like that spirit is saying you can have those you can have pleasures but it's good to moderate it it's good to balance it and we're heading into this darker part of the forest right now but it's mostly like a cedar forest these beautiful cedars right now and cedar is a very very um healing a healing tree um but cedar is known for its resilience for the fact that it is waterproof and the fact that um, it takes hundreds and hundreds of years often to disintegrate. So Spirit is saying that if you ground yourself right now, Earth Signs, if you ground yourself into this fiery uh, time in Leo, which of course when you're watching this, this could be any time, but right now, um, for those of you watching it, it's very important that you ground any, any ideas, any passions, and you just start okay because spirit is saying you will reap the benefits very soon but you really need to just start if you haven't yet done that spirit is saying for those of you who haven't taken the leap dive in spirit has your back you just have to have the trust and know that no matter no matter what blockages you faced in the past those are often in our minds we often create a mental prison for ourselves excuse me for ourselves which is just an illusion because we want to keep ourselves safe. We want to stay in the familiar. That's what our brains often want to do. But spirit is saying you have to go out into the unknown, okay? You have to go out potentially on a walk in the woods if you can. Go on a bike ride. Connect with the nature spirits wherever you are. We're heading into this beautiful birch forest. And birch... Birch also has a lot of waterproof properties to, um, to protect, to make shelters, but it also, um, it's also the first to come into a space after a burn has happened and it's the first to regrow. So it's also a nitrogen fixer. So it's kind of related to a bean, unrelated, but it, it's very helpful to the other trees, the other plants, and it helps share its nutrients with them. So for some of you, I think it's really important that you work together. Okay, Earth Signs, like if you've been feeling like, oh no, I need to just do this myself, like, you know what, maybe it's a good idea to ask um, for others' advice or ask if others would like to be a part 
of whatever it is that you're creating, whatever it is that you're manifesting. Because I've noticed over time that when I'm trying to manifest something, if I have other people manifesting different things, it doesn't always allow my manifestation to take place quickly. But if I'm manifesting together with others, the same emotion or the same um, outcome, that manifestation will be 10 times faster. Okay, so if you've been reticent to connect with others and you're a little worried that your manifestation will go off the rails because of other people's influence, just make sure that you and these other people have the same focus, the same dream, the same goal, and you will manifest so much quicker. So I'm seeing that, yes, we're about to head up a hill, but there's a path to choose. We could either go straight up or we could go to the right. Since my back hurts lately, I'm going to go to the right because I don't feel like climbing up too much. Um, so Spirit is saying that you'll have a choice. You can take the hard road or you can take the easy road. And you might as well take the easy road. There'll still be bumps in your path, but there's no point in forcing something um, and thinking that just because something is harder that it's going to bring more benefit in the long run. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes when we take the easy road, it actually ends up being the harder road in the long run. So it's very confusing, but look at how beautiful this is. We've got all this green moss and I'm just seeing that the color green is connected to the heart chakra, but it's also the sign of like creativity. It's a, it's a color of, of growth, creativity, expression also. So and wealth and abundance. So I just feel like you're coming into a lot of abundance. You're connecting. Oh, look, I see a little moth. I see that you're going to be having lots of maybe ideas coming to you um, in, this, in this month. Whenever this reading is coming to you or this walk, I feel like you're going to be having a lot of ideas. And Spirit is saying, you know, take a couple of these ideas and just try them out. Stop overanalyzing. Stop criticizing yourself. Oh, I see this, this blue marker in the path. And the dog has noticed a scent. Okay, so I'm seeing that with regards to that, that you might feel like you have um, like a really good idea. And so Spirit is saying, just follow it because there's going to be opportunities coming to you once you take that leap. You're going to have all these different um, people that might come into your life, different opportunities, different chances to take. And Spirit is saying, take them. This is your chance now to climb and fly. Okay, guys? So I really hope that you enjoyed this reading walk. And I'm seeing that like, yes, there's markers now, even though we're on a path, like there's, there's markers. And so it's going to be a lot easier to follow than maybe you thought. So I would just stop worrying, stop overanalyzing, stop criticizing yourself and just plant your seeds because the abundance that you're going to reap from this is going to be incredible. Just beautiful earth signs. So I hope that you enjoyed this walk and I hope that you enjoy your reading and we will see you in the next one. Thank you, nature spirits. Thank you, earth signs. Bye. Hello, magical air signs, and welcome to your walk in the woods with spirit. Today we are connecting with mother nature. We are connecting with the plants. We are connecting with the creatures. And we are asking what advice, what guidance, what motivation can you give to our beloved air signs today? So you could have air placements in your chart. You could be a Gemini, um, Aquarius, or Libra. Or like I said, you could have those placements. So what messages from spirit are coming through today? Look at this air signs. We have the wind blowing through these beautiful birch trees. Just stunning. So birch are some of the first trees to um, take, take root and seed and grow after uh, a fire has happened. So if you've been going through a lot, air signs, potentially you've gone through something that's been really, really intense and has kind of shaken you to your core. Um, Spirit is saying it's okay to have fallen down. 
birch are often the first to actually fall down. So they're the first to root, but they're also the first to fall down and become the soil and the fertile growth books. You can see them here for the other, um, for the other beings, for the other trees to grow. So Spirit is saying, it's okay to fall down. Okay, it's okay because you are the fertile soil that can help so many people grow. And I'm not saying that you're not going to climb to the sky. Or I'm not saying that you haven't already climbed to the sky. What I'm saying is that sometimes we have to accept that we have to fall down in order to climb up and rise again and be reborn out of the ashes. Many of you might have fire placements in your chart, but this is fire season right now that I'm in. And so when you're watching this, if you're feeling like you've gone through a very dark period in your life spirit is saying that you are you have the um you have the knowledge and the wisdom from whatever you have been through to be able to climb out of this hole okay there is light there is power and sun waiting for you you just need to open your eyes with fresh perspective and you will see that there is an abundance there is a world of possibility at your disposal it's okay to go into hermit mode it's okay to take time for yourself and regenerate and heal air signs now i know that for a lot of air signs we're very communicative beings we're very imaginative beings okay we have a lot of ideas that come to us and so if you have all these ideas and you have this inspiration coming to you, but maybe you don't feel like you have the energy or the vitality right now, that's okay. Spirit is saying, take the time to nurture your body. Take the time to connect with Mother Earth, to connect with the color green. That will really help to heal your heart. And that will really help to boost your creative power. So surround yourself with the color green if you can. Wear the color, go outside. That really helps to um, strengthen that manifestation of abundance. So we're just turning up this path here and we're climbing up this hill. And Spirit is saying, yes, if you've been down in the dumps, if you've been down in the darkness, get ready to rise, air signs. Because you're getting ready to climb. You're getting ready to come back up into the sky and share your creative power. It, it's okay to have gone within. It's okay to have taken the time for yourself. We don't give enough time to ourselves in this society to take care of our minds, our bodies, our hearts, our souls. We really don't. And that is so vital now more than ever. Oh, I'm being drawn to this beautiful moss. Okay, let's go and take a look. If we're talking about emerald green here, look at that. Oh, I think like moss is got to be one of my favorite life forms on planet Earth. Oh, it's stunning. So take a time maybe to connect with moss, bring some into your home. And I love to put like a quartz crystal with it because it just really magnifies that energy of heart healing and, and abundance. So. We're still climbing up and we're leaving the deciduous forest and we're coming into a more coniferous forest up the hill and the conifers they are actually um they're green all year long okay so they don't shed their needles in the winter time and spirit is saying that you're getting ready to become a being that no longer necessarily needs to um hide from the world you're getting ready to find your inner oasis Find that inner passion, that inner power, that inner garden of Eden, and you're getting ready to share that. But sometimes it takes a lot of time of going within and taking those, those hermit modes, those, those times of regeneration. Actually, we're going to go down this little road into the coniferous forest. It might seem dark and eerie at first, but if you look up, you can see that the tip tops are all green and underneath the trees have gone through a lot of death and rebirth, growing and shedding. So, like I said, conifers hold on to their needles um, all year, but only when the sun is shining. 
okay? The lower branches lose their leaves, lose their needles, which is fascinating. So you may have lost a lot of things throughout your life, air signs. You could have lost friends. You could have lost um, loved ones. You could have lost yourself along the way. You could have lost yourself in a maze of confusion, wondering where it is that you should go in your life, what it is that you should put your energy into. And if you've been feeling confused, Spirit is saying that you will find, you will find this space of light, a garden inside of yourself, a safe space to be. Now here you have all of these young conif coniferous saplings. Okay, we've got the firs. It's mostly firs actually, and moss. So Spirit is saying, now is the time to start planting your seeds. Now is the time to start planting your evergreen seeds. And you will glow and grow all year. You will be abundant for the rest of your life if you grow these seeds now. Now we're passing over this old fence and Spirit is saying, maybe in the past you've built up walls, you've built barriers to protect yourself. But sometimes these barriers that we've used to protect ourselves actually inhibit our growth. They actually prevent us from expanding. And so removing these barriers, removing these blocks from within our mind can actually help us soar to the sky. So you can follow the stepping stones um, that this 3D dimension is leading you on. There's a lot of opportunities that might be coming your way. And since you've taken the time to connect with yourself on a deeper level, air signs, and if you haven't, now is the time, Spirit is saying, it's okay to re-examine how your mind works. It's okay to try to understand what barriers, what obstacles, what blocks have been put up in your brain throughout your life. And a lot of these blocks are put up in our childhood. But once you release them, you can see that there is a field of potential. And the dog is rolling around and just enjoying herself. And it's this field of unlimited potential where we can grow anything. Look at the sun is shining, air signs. Like the sun is shining down upon you, waiting for you to plant the seeds so that you can grow. So whatever that idea, whatever that relationship, now is the time to sow that seed. Spirit is on your side. The, the plants, the trees, the creatures, they're buzzing, waiting for you to bring this dream that you have to fruition and it's been such an important time to take the time to gestate and germinate your seed right the seeds need darkness seeds need that fertile rich soil to be able to grow so free your mind from the shackles open your eyes and see that there is a world waiting to be reborn inside of you and on a last note, this, this lichen here, this moss, is extremely special because this moss only grows um, in the cleanest air spaces. And air signs, your mind, your mind can be cleansed. That's why you've gone within, to cleanse and clear your mind of all of the rubbish that's no longer needed to help serve you on your greater purpose. So like this lichen, cleanse your mind so that you can grow what you truly desire, what truly is going to bring you joy and bliss in your life. Let go of that which no longer serves you. Break down those walls, those illusions. Clear your mind, cleanse your mind, and connect to the beautiful emerald color green. And watch your roots sink deep into the ground so you can have the nourishment that you need from the dark and climb into the light. Thank you so much, Air Signs, for sharing your energy today. Thank you for coming on this walk, and thank you, Mother Earth and Nature Spirits, for sharing your wisdom with us today. We will see you in the next reading. Bye! Hello, Water 
signs and welcome to your walk through the woods. Today we are asking Spirit, what do our beloved water signs need to know? What advice, what guidance, what motivation can these beautiful creatures give to our beautiful water signs today? Now you could be an Aquarius, sorry, not an Aquarius. You could be a Scorpio, a Pisces, or a Cancer. I always think Aquarius because it's the water bearer, but no, Aquarius is air. So you could have those placements, or you could just come here because you're interested in what the water signs need to know. All right. I'm seeing so much moss here. We are in this beautiful, beautiful moss trail, water signs. Just absolutely stunning. And now a lot of this moss, I don't exactly know the name of it, but this particular type of white moss grows only in the cleanest of um, air. So we're on top of a really almost 500 feet above sea level. It's a, it's a hill in the highlands of Ontario and the air up here is just so clean. And so water signs, I feel like you're really taking you're really taking the time to try to cleanse your mind. I'm looking up at the, the wind in the trees right now, blowing through with ease. It's not a quiet wind, but it's not a violent wind either. It's just rushing through, cleaning out everything, I feel. And so if you feel like you need to clean out your mind, if you need to cleanse um, any negative thought patterns, any obstacles that are obstructing your way, now is the time to do that. And if you've been working really hard to do that, Spirit is saying that you are going to get to plant so many fresh seeds in your mind. So many new ideas are going to sprout and build an entirely new, fresh forest. Because in the past, a lot of our minds have been riddled with things that no longer serve us, old ways of behaving that no longer serve us. And Spirit is saying, let some of these die. Look at this. We can see this one, this one poplar, sorry, aspen tree. And it's cracked in half, but it hasn't totally fallen over yet. This is from a new idea coming through, okay? So ideas often take um, on the form of element air. Storms come in, rush through, break down trees. And trees to me are ideas and ideologies in a sense. And that's when we need to build something new. So this tree hasn't fully fallen down yet. Maybe you are in the process of breaking down um, a lot of these modes of thinking, but they haven't fully broken apart yet. But restructuring our minds to be what we want them to be is so vitally important. And oftentimes when we follow a schedule, when we follow, um, you know, often the mundane rhythm of life where we just wake up, we, we do our jobs, we make our dinners and we go back to sleep and we do it again, we lose track of our desires of what we truly want in life. We get lost in the matrix of that reality, the go, 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 and we forget to connect to earth and ourselves because we are earthlings we are beings of this planet we drink her water we breathe her air we eat her plants we are earth and so we need to connect with her to understand who and what we are crafted from so earth signs i think this is a really profound time for you to actually take the time to understand who and what you are Look, there's another tree. This one's even, this one's really interesting because it's dead. It's dead and it has no roots anymore. And yet it's still inhibiting the growth of this other tree potentially, or it's still holding on to this, this newer, um, this newer tree. I think it's an ash tree. So you could have these old ideas, these old thought forms that are holding on to these, um, new ideas that are holding them back. So that could be maybe a parental figure that's saying, no, like you can't do that. You have to do it my way. You have to do it this way. This is the way that our family has always done it. And you're saying, no, I believe that I need to go and do it this way. So sometimes we have to let go of those. Wow, my dog is actually just letting go of something right now. Um, sometimes we have to let go of 
you know, these conventions that our parents, our teachers, our authority figures have given to us and rework the system, rework them in our brains and realize that, no, there is a new way, a better way to do things. Okay? So I know it's hard to stand up to these beings. I know it's hard to stand up to these authority figures. But that's how we take our power. That's how we ground our ideas, our ideologies, and we become the trees. We become the ones that climb up to the sky and root ourselves deep within the stones, the rocks. Now I'm coming across these beautiful little stone guys here. And this to, this to me is about taking ideas from the past and reworking them into something new. Like rocks and stones are some of the oldest beings on our planet, okay? They've been around for billions of years. Now these were left over by the Ice Age, um, from the, glaci the glaciers that passed through these areas. And so take things that, have, that are maybe old, like old ideas, and Spirit is saying to rework them into something new. In fact, I also see it as a chance to also connect with your ancestral um, lineage, to connect to those beings who have given you life and learn from them. And that's not to say that you take all of the good and leave the bad. That's to say maybe your ancestors in the past have made mistakes and it's up to you now to heal them. It's up to you to grow from them. A lot of us are here, we're here to heal our ancestral trauma, our ancestral wounds and rebuild from that. Often it takes many tower moments, many moments in our lives to break us and shake us apart and rebuild them. And oftentimes we feel like there's no way I'll be able to get up again. But water signs, you have the courage. To be a water sign is to be someone who is deeply, deeply connected to their emotional realms. And a lot of the time we get overwhelmed by our emotions. But to be able to see our emotions from a higher perspective and not get lost in them is power. That is the key. Because when someone comes to you, triggers you, you feel those emotions come up and you want to retaliate. But if you're able to watch those emotions build up inside you, feel that aggression, anger, pain, whatever it is, and not react to it? That is power. That is power. You are an animal creature on planet Earth. Like any other animal, when an animal is um, tantalized, it responds through also an emotional reaction. Animals don't often um, think about their response, they just react. Unless they've been trained, of course. And so it is up to us, water signs, all signs. It's up to us to train our human bodies, to train our emotions and our, our minds so that we can actually accomplish the things that we want to, to make our dreams become a reality. So water signs, if you have a dream, if you have something that's been brewing beneath the surface, Spirit is saying, now is the time to look for the place to plant these seeds. Now is the time to water the seeds that you have already planted. You are an abundant being. And a lot of the time we live in a space of lack because that's what our parents had been raised in. That's what their parents had been raised in. But we are no longer in this space. We are in a space of abundance where everyone can have what they need to survive. Everyone can have the bounty and the love of Mother Earth. So look, look at this. Mother Earth just like gives us food, right? Like we live on a planet that just, it's basically like a garden candy shop. And so we have our own internal oasis inside of us. And water signs, when you're so deeply connected to your emotions, that's a very, very, very vital navigational system for you to know what it is that you desire and what you don't desire. To know where you want to go and where you don't. And our emotions, a lot of the time, they take control of us and they tell us to be afraid. 
And it's, it's important to note that fear and analyze it logically and say, is that a rational fear or is that me being irrational? Okay, because there are so many different types of emotions. There are so many deep, deep wounds. And it is up to you water signs to remain connected to your emotions, but from an observant point of view. Try to ground yourself. Try to, try to be like the roots of these, these plants. Ground yourself into your watery emotional depths where you can use these emotions as fuel to grow stronger. To climb into the sky to that fire that you see. If there's a fire, like maybe there's this passionate idea that you have or this, this person that you feel desire for. Ground yourself deep within your emotional realms and you will know how deep to put your roots, how much energy you need to put in to reap the rewards. Look at it, look at, look at, look at. The rains had just come and now we have the bounty of these berries. Okay, so. Stay in touch with your emotions without letting them get the better of you and you will reap the abundance. But you must ground yourself because that is how manifestation works. You might have the idea, but if you do not take it and put it into action, you won't see the benefit. You'll be like, why is my manifestation not taking, um, like, why is my manifestation not coming to fruition? Manifestation works when you have an idea, you garden that idea, and you take the steps to make it become a reality, or you take the opportunities that spirit grants you, and you know intuitively which opportunities to take because you are connected to your emotional depths and your intuition. So get ready, get ready water signs to reap some intense bounty. I'm just like seeing all these raspberries right now. You're going to just be bathing in this beautiful, beautiful energy once you are able to connect. <sighs> so thank you so much for coming on this beautiful walk with me. I don't know what I even said to you guys because Spirit is coming through with so many messages, but I hope that some of that resonated. And if it did, thank you. Thank you, Spirit Guides. Thank you, beautiful Earth Elements for coming through today. And thank you, Water Signs. We will see you on the next walk. Bye.